We've all wondered what if at least once in our lives. But do we ever consider the consequences of erasing a timeline? What about those that are left behind? In the comic store, Sam picks up a comic. He can't believe that he has finally found this issue of Commander Canada. Hang on, that sounds like... Oh, never mind. His friend Mason is equally thrilled that they have it, and they discuss the terms of the custody, even though Sam actually paid for it. Suddenly, they are approached by a gang of boys who ask what they're up to. The leader, Tommy, snatches the comic out of Sam's hands and takes it out of his protective wrapping. Mason objects and says that he can't do that. It's mint. Tommy laughs and throws it into a puddle. Stepping over it, he replies that now it's pave mint. That doesn't even make any sense. The gang strolls away and Sam picks up his precious comic book. The two friends walk home down the train line and Mason tries to make Sam feel better. He tells him that he knows how much that comic book meant to him and his dad. Mason realizes that it has been almost a year now since, but Sam stops him from finishing his sentence. Mason apologizes and they continue their walk home. When Sam gets in, he is met by his mother, Jenny, who was concerned for his whereabouts. She scolds him for being late for dinner as she wanted to get back to normal, but Sam is angry. It's as though his mom is trying to make him forget his dad. She denies this, but reminds him that she is still here, and them both moving on is more important than some old comic book. Sam says that it was his dad's favorite and goes up to his room. That night, as a storm rages outside, Sam is in the treehouse reading comic books. Suddenly, the roof springs a leak and water starts to drip onto his pile of comics. Enough with the wet comics already. Sam climbs onto a stool to try to fix the hole. The wind howls around him and comic books start to fly. As Sam reaches to save one, he slips on the stool, just as the treehouse is struck by lightning and it collapses. Sam wakes the next morning in an unknown bedroom. He takes a look around and is surprised to find a photograph of him and Tommy together. He searches the drawers, but they aren't his clothes. Nevertheless, he finds something to wear and leaves the room. In the hallway, he notices a picture of him with a strange man and woman, and the woman greets him in the kitchen with the words, You're up. Okay, what on earth is going on right now? She asks if he is feeling okay, and suddenly the strange man walks in. They explain that he may be confused about some things. It's just a minor concussion after he hit his head playing soccer. Sam tells them that he was in his treehouse last night and the woman suggests calling the doctor again. Instead, the man just tries to jog his memory by showing him some pictures. Sam decides to return to his room to lay down, he tells them, but once inside, he climbs out the window and runs down the street to the house that he remembers as home. He knocks on the door and Jenny answers. He barges in, but it's clear that she doesn't recognize him. He immediately apologizes for being a jerk yesterday, but tells her that she didn't need to prank him out like that. Jenny still continues to ask if she knows him. He nonchalantly replies that she's his mom. This is their house, their stuff, their treehouse. Sam stops short as he looks outside as there is no sign of the treehouse. A man enters the room that Sam recognizes as his dad, Andy. Sam rushes forward to hug him, but the couple deny being his parents. They offer to help him and pick up the phone to call the police. Sam doesn't know what's happening, so rushes out of the house into the street. As he looks around, his body starts to glitch. Then, his surroundings start to glitch, and he can see the decimated remains of the street before everything glitches back. He runs up the street and knocks on Mason's door. Mason answers and asks what he wants. Sam is relieved to find that Mason recognizes him, but there seems to be something wrong. Mason claims that Sam and Tommy mistreat him at school. Sam tries to explain what has happened to him, but Mason doesn't want to know. He tries to close the door, but Sam suddenly yells that he knows about the mayonnaise incident. Mason is shook, and even my interest has been piqued. I hope we can come back to this before the end. Sam goes on to tell him that he knows he still sleeps with a stuffed cat named St. Jerome. Kind of cute, actually. He gags when he smells licorice, has a weird belly button, relieves himself when he's scared, and right on cue, Mason lets one rip. 
Sam explains that he thinks he's in an alternate universe and needs Mason's help. Mason lets him in. Sam theorizes that the storm may have caused an interdimensional rift, much similar to the one that Mason just let rip. There's plenty of examples in the comics. Mason tells him that normally when they wake up in different bodies, it's because they need to learn a lesson. He now tells Mason about the glitch. Mason speculates that he may continue to glitch more and more until he gets stuck there. He suggests that as the treehouse got him there, maybe the treehouse could get him back. Sam tells him that there is no treehouse, so they are determined to convince his parents to build one before it's too late. The friends go to the woodyard to find Andy. While they search for him, Sam ignores a call from his new mom. Andy spots them, and as Sam tries to explain, Andy attempts to throw them out. However, Sam reels off a load of details about his dad that only a son could know. He then tells Andy what happened, but Andy replies that it's impossible. Sam tells him that they think they need to rebuild the treehouse to get him back home. As his new mom tries calling again, Sam says that he has to go, but he understands if his dad doesn't believe him. But surprisingly, Andy tells him to come by the house the following day, and they'll talk. As Sam arrives back at his new house, his surroundings glitch again. Inside, his parents scold him for disappearing all day. He tries to make his excuses, but his new parents seem suspicious. Sam tries to throw them off the trail, but his behavior only serves to make them even more suspicious. As Sam goes to bed, he asks Logan, the dog, if this could all be a dream. He tells him that part of him wants to wake up in his own room, but he also wants to be able to see his dad some more. He is also quite enjoying having a dog. And who wouldn't? Logan is such a sweetie. The following morning, Sam and Andy survey the area where the treehouse is to be built. Sam explains that it took them two days, but they never managed to finish the roof. His dad inquires why they never finished it, but Sam stops short of telling him the truth. They are interrupted by Jenny, who asks Andy why he is doing this. Andy tells her that he has read about things like this in the comics. She mocks him, but he says that if Sam is right, then they're helping him to get back home. Otherwise, they're helping a lonely kid feel better. Jenny is now on board, and so they start their day by going to a favorite restaurant to get pancakes. And how we love pancakes on this channel. Mmm, pancakes. As the treehouse takes shape, Sam and his parents enjoy their time together. Sam and Andy visit the comic book store, but as they leave, they run into Tommy, who asks where Sam has been. Sam blows him off, and the family return to building the treehouse. Sam asks Jenny why they never had kids, and she says that they did always plan to one day. He tells her that in his universe, she is the best mom, but now realizes that he never tells her that enough. As the family starts to enjoy themselves again, the world starts to glitch, and Sam can hear his mom begging him to wake up. He passes out. When he wakes, Andy and Jenny are standing over him, looking concerned. He tells them about the glitches and Mason's theory that he could get trapped in that dead world. They resolve to start work early tomorrow. The following day, as Sam leaves the house, the weather report is forecasting heavy storms that night. The treehouse is nearing completion as the storm rolls in. Sam thinks it's the same storm that knocked his treehouse down, but Andy assures him that they will be ready. Sam glitches again and hears his mother's voice. Just before the storm breaks, they finish, and everyone carved their initials onto the ladder. Sam apologizes for leaving an empty treehouse in their yard, but Jenny admits that this parenting thing has been kind of fun, and she hints that she'd like to try for a child. The rain falls, and Sam tries to decorate the inside of the treehouse so that it resembles the other one as much as possible. Sam hugs Mason and his father goodbye, but he suddenly asks Andy not to leave. He admits to him that his father is dead in the other dimension. Andy doesn't want to know how, but realizes that that was why Sam acted so surprised when he first saw him. Sam says that he misses his father and doesn't want to leave. Andy assures Sam that his mom is still there, and if she is anything like she is here, then her heart will break in two without him. And his father would want him to be there with her. 
Sam continues to glitch, but asks Andy to stay with him a little longer. Andy puts his arm around his son, and they tell each other that they love them. Outside, lightning strikes the treehouse. Sam wakes in the hospital with his mother by his side. He tells her that he saw his dad, and they both helped him find his way home. She tells Sam that she loves him, and he tells her that he loves her too. Sometime later, Sam examines the remains of the treehouse and finds the initials that he, Andy, and Jenny carved into the ladder. He walks back to his mom and asks her to rebuild it with him, and also asks if they can get a dog. And there we have it. Sam has been able to reconnect with his mother, and they have a much better relationship for it. Andy was right. She would have been heartbroken had Sam never returned. And although he clearly misses his father, at least he had the opportunity to say goodbye properly. What do you think about this one? Do you think it's possible to glitch to another dimension? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlist on the screen. Thanks for watching.